Hey, it's Doc. So we've had a fair amount of questions about our FJ40 build, so I thought I'd throw together a little video so you could see some of the cool stuff that we've done to this. And you know, this is a 13 year work in progress, and quite honestly, it's never ever going to be finished. So it started off as a 1977 uh, FJ40, probably was somewhere around 120,000 miles on it, at least that was what it was showing. It had a clapped out 305 Chevy in it, and basically it was a gigantic rust bucket. If you look at the very end of this video, you can see all the pictures that we took in the whole process of building it. Uh, it's a very long slideshow, so like I said, I just left that at the end. The approach that we took was really not to reinvent the wheel. We wanted to design a very nice Land Cruiser that was capable of working, capable of doing some off-roading, and just being a good general all-around vehicle. The goals were really pretty simple. We wanted to maintain a pretty traditional appearance to the Land Cruiser, although we wanted to have modern underpinnings, you know, great brakes, a good engine, modern electronics with heating and air conditioning, and, you know, some, some other cool stuff. We wanted to have a good range, you know, that, that kind of thing. So what we started off with, you know, first was we pretty much ditched the entire body. The only thing that's original on the Land Cruiser yet really is the frame, parts of the drivetrain, the doors, and the hardtop. Everything else has been pretty much tossed in the bin. The body is a PACOL unit, uh, which is a complete tub and firewall, uh, which was manufactured for us in Colombia and shipped to the United States uh, out of modern metal. Uh, when we got it, we had the bottom side uh, finished in Linex, so it would have a lot of corrosion resistance. And the, uh, also we got new front fenders. Um, the other things that were original I forgot was the hood and some of the side skirts here. But as you can see it's finished in uh, I, I believe is a DuPont leaf green. We elected to cover up the side rivets because you know I, I just decided to have a finished looking FJ instead of one with little rivet dents all over it. The wheels are 15 inch OEM steel wheels with the with the original hubcaps which is a look that I absolutely adore. Uh, some BF Goodrich mud tires on there which for my use on the gravel probably is not a great idea because they do throw a lot of rocks. As we're coming around to the front of the vehicle you can see the trail defense bumper which is a very very limited edition unit that was made by the guys at Complete Off-Road. Actually it was designed for a TJ but it was very easily adapted to the FJ40. On that is a 10,000 pound worn winch. Now keep in mind that some of the the style of this vehicle is you know over 10 years old. We wanted to keep the front end really nice and clean looking so we elected not to do the turn signals on the fenders but instead we went to the hot rod world and found some headlights with integrated turn signals, which I think look really nice even to this day. So as we come to the engine bay, you know, I want to reiterate that we wanted to not recreate the wheel. The truck had already come with a 305 Chevy engine in it, which was obviously clapped out in junk. So we elected to replace that with a 350 Chevy crate engine with a holly fuel injection and we kept the original uh, ram horn headers on it which fit perfectly for the limited amount of space that there is. The Chevy makes about 250 horsepower maybe a little bit more with the holly fuel injection on it which is about double the amount of horsepower that the original power plant had and it's about perfect for the weight of the, of the Land Cruiser. In addition we also wanted to have the comforts of air conditioning and a decent heater so we put in vintage air. Uh, there's also an air compressor and an oversized radiator. So overall this this is in my opinion the perfect power plant for an FJ40. Something else that I personally added my own personal touch was I hate looking at V8 builds for Land Cruisers and seeing these tiny air cleaners in there. So I wanted to put something in with a little bit of class so again I went to the hot rod world and I found a repop of 
1956 or 57 Cadillac Batwing uh, air cleaner, which I love. It fills the space nicely, and I think it looks really good. Something else I also want to note is that when you do a build like this, you know who your friends are. You may notice that the engine compartment's actually very well organized, particularly how the wiring goes. And I called in a favor from a friend, and uh, his name's Kevin Conlon. He really came through with wiring this vehicle and putting this rat's nest of wires into some sort of organization. And I think it looks beautiful, and it turned out really nicely. So that's it for the power plant, the engine bay. Uh, I'm very proud of it. I think it's very cool. Now we'll move on to the interior and the first thing that you see when you look into the vehicle is you see this amazing metal tech six point roll bar. Uh, we have custom padding on that and this was welded up for us by Kelderman Manufacturing which just happens to be down the road and you might know them from some of the amazing uh, pickup truck builds that they do that are jacked up sky high. Moving down in the frame, you can see that we've got the Corbo Baja RS recliners that happen to have sea heaters, which is really nice. And these are suspended on a project that we personally did, which was a special adjustable seat mount, which we did sell as kits. It uh, didn't really take off, so you probably won't see many of them out there. Below that, you can see the Manafree 28-gallon uh, gas tank which is guaranteed to kill you if you ever crash this vehicle. Another perspective product that we had was the center console with the removable ammo box, which I happen to keep all my winch gear in there so I can just take it out and hook it up to the winch and do what I need to do. It pops out and goes back nicely. It turned out to be a little bit too complex to manufacture, so it never really made it past the drawing table. And then we took this one and modified it for our purposes, so it's super cool and it's one-off. Now we're moving on over to the actual controls of the vehicle. These are a standard set of speed hut gauges. As you can see, there's speedometer, oil pressure, water pressure, uh, temperature, stuff like that, fuel gauge. And then we wanted to keep the actual dashboard as close to original as possible. The one button that you see me fiddling with here, which I haven't had time to mark yet, actually is the adaptable power steering, so I can make it as uh, easy or as hard as I want to. And then the push-pull controls I tried to keep as original as possible. And then we get down to the auxiliary gauges, which you know you have the lockers, you have the lights, and the compressor, stuff like that. This is the Holly Sniper control panel, which if I really want to know what's going on with the engine, this is the place I'd look. And as we pan down, uh, this is the twin stick attachment uh, for the transfer case, which allows me to put the vehicle into two low instead of just being limited to four high and four low. The center console has some really cool features in the respect of this is where my seat heaters are at, this is my control for the fridge and for the 9000 watt inverter. I've got a couple of power adapters here for USB and then also one for standard uh, PowerPoint. Monstrous cup holders. And probably one of the coolest things that uh, Kevin threw in as a surprise for me is a little top secret compartment which will no longer be a top secret. But if you push this button here and kind of look forward, you got, and it's in slow motion right now, I've got a cool little padded compartment there, uh, which currently I just keep my glasses in. Panning over, uh, you'll notice that we got rid of the fabric door inserts and went with aluminum ones just because the fabric ones were kind of dumb to be honest. Taking a look uh, here at the inside of the glove compartment and you know one you can see my power on off switch which I can shut off all the power in the vehicle which is kind of nice. Fuse boxes in there. 
Um, one of our failed ideas was the ability to be able to flat tow this vehicle. So we had everything wired up for that. Unfortunately, when I switched over to the automatic, we could no longer do the flat tow situation. So that was uh, a little bit of a loss for me. On the windshield, you can see my uh, Garmin unit, which helps us navigate the gravel roads, which we've been doing videos on. And this is kind of a blast of the past. We actually modified the ashtray to have a little slot to hold a cell phone in, although cell phones have grown dramatically, so that no longer works. Part of the actual plans for this to be a real workhorse was to be able to illuminate uh, things very well with it, but we didn't want to have a bunch of lights hanging on the outside of the vehicle. So again, my friend very cleverly was able to place the LEDs inside and really pretty much out of the way. Something I both love and hate about this vehicle is the 4 Plus Products FJ rear bumper hitch full tire cooler carrier thing. Unfortunately, in order to open everything up, it requires you to pull this pin, drop this uh, lever. Um, actually, we put the lever on a lanyard, so it was just one less thing to lose, but I don't like having loose pieces like that. It does carry a lot, which is nice. Um, although it does limit the, the ability to get into the back door, which would also be really nice when you're working around the farm. But it does lock down solidly, and that's pretty cool. So in the back end of the vehicle, and to be honest, I haven't had a whole lot of time to figure out the organization of this. I'll probably put in a drawer unit at some point. Again, you get a nice view of the uh, six-point roll bar, and also uh, a little bit of my finger there as well you can see the back side of the adjustable seat mounts that we built uh, which I'm, I'm pretty proud of unfortunately again they, they were never a good seller so you know say lobby over here we have the no mess fire extinguisher placed in a very convenient spot and also the 9000 watt inverter and the air tank for the air compressor for in a, in a very convenient spot for filling up the tires. Complete off-road sticker on there because they did a majority of the work on this vehicle and did an amazing job as far as getting it functional, reliable, and actually working well. If you make notice of the ceiling of the vehicle, I removed the fabric liner from the top and we line X that in a bright white so it's very reflective for the strip lights that we have up there. Again, you'll see that later in this, in this video and how well it illuminates the interior of the vehicle. As you can see, the rest of the cargo area is really a blank slate. I'm not sure exactly what I'll do with it yet, but we'll work on that later. We'll go to the outside of the vehicle again so you can get a look at the passenger side. Got some nice uh, rock rail down there and a step which is uh, very convenient. Opening the door you get another view of the vehicle from the passenger side uh, taking a look at the driver's side and the dash itself. It's all that you've seen before. Take a look at the lighting up above and the very bright white line X reflecting which is super nice. Just turned it off. And I always pull the key to make sure that my battery doesn't go dead. Good hard slam of the door to make sure that it seats properly. Something that I didn't mention yet is the fact that we spent a lot of time finding all of the original weather stripping for the top and the doors, which I think is super, super important. It took a lot of money, a long time, many sources. Taking a peek underneath the vehicle here, you can see the line x underneath of the tub. Personally, I think this is a brilliant idea as it should really stop any corrosion. The mud does kind of stick to it a little bit, but overall I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. And of course our powder coated frame. Going back past the trail defense bumper. And then you get a nice view of the front of the vehicle. And another nice walk around. 
part of the criteria for this build was that I wanted this to be a workhorse also at night, so it needed to light up well on the inside of the vehicle so I could do some work on the inside. And this is where the hidden LEDs and the reflective white material on the ceiling works very well. On the outside, of course, you saw before that we had the LEDs mounted on the inside pointing out. Uh, from an aerial view, you can see, you know, these are the headlights. Uh, unfortunately, one of my fog lights is burnt out, so, you know, it's not very impressive there. But as we start turning on the LEDs, you can see an impressive amount of surrounding area lit up. And to reiterate the importance of this, we actually had a flood about the time that we were building this vehicle. And we really, you know, the, the flood came in the middle of the night. It was hard rain. We really could have used a mobile light source. And since we have built this, quite honestly, I there's probably two or three times where you know, I pulled my daughter out of a ditch in a driving snow, and it was really nice to have all of this surrounding ambient light so I could get my work done and I could do it safely. Uh, we've also used it for moving beehives in the dark when the weather was threatening and the water was rising. So again, this, this is a very nice addition to the build. I think every vehicle now, you know, at the time we built this LED lighting was you know, pretty novel, whereas now, you know, it's everywhere, it's inexpensive. I think every every off-road vehicle should be built with supplemental lighting. It is just that important. If you've stuck around this long, I appreciate you walking through the build with us and uh, seeing all the, the features that we were able to tuck into this FJ40. If you stick around for a little bit longer, there is actually a slideshow of all the photos that we took during the whole build process. So you can see the vehicle as it originally looked, how we tore it down, and how we built it up. Again, thank you for sticking around this long and watching the video. Please make sure that you like and subscribe. If you have any questions, throw them out in the comments. I'll be glad to answer them. Have a great one. We'll see you on the trail.